Now there's some of the gold in our box from today. As you can see in that black rib mat. Quite a bit right there in that half inch rib. And then we got some more up here in the box. So what we're doing, we built a little super sucker, a three inch. And we're using it. So we'll show you how it works. So you can see this gold blitz loose box just set up for fine gold. And it has a nugget trap that goes down here and right here in the bottom, you know, but I don't ever use it because where I'm at right now, we're not going to have big nuggets. And if we are going to have big nuggets, they're going to get caught up in this box anyway. We're not going to lose anything out of here. We don't got enough water for it. Put that rock over there to hold it to, hold it to the bottom. It's got that real nice full length. Um, rib rubber matting all the way down that first set of the uh, of the angled entrance and then it goes to that half inch rib which is really nice and just holds that gold so well you know it really does I mean look at all that gold in there And we've been down here, oh, two hours. About two hours about? Hour and a half, two hours maybe. And we're using our new sucker that we made. Which is sitting right here. We're gonna show you what we did on that. And show you how it works. So we made this three inch super sucker. Basically it's uh, like a John Adams Dave Bryce, Zuka, Reed Lukens combo. We'll take it apart and show you how we put it together and do all the measurements later. Um, I made it about the same height as I am. Uh, I could have gone two more feet to get more of an extension to go deeper in the water. But we're going to show you how it works. I just sit in the chair doing it because it's that much easier. Put this handle on here to where it actually turns with our hand. Get a load, turn it so 45 degrees is up, put your load in there. Like I said, if it was two more feet longer, I could run it across my knees all the way and go all the way across the hole. I mean, the longer it is, the better. So I'm talking, it's, it's uh, 55 inches was this length. So we're looking at, uh, basically right now, it's five feet long. I think seven feet long would be perfect because I could reach that much farther. And you got so much control when you're sitting in a, in a river with it like this. The control is just a just ridiculous amount of control. when you get a clog. I've had enough of them now that we've had a couple of them actually have to pull out the end. We're just running a straight three inch, which is good. I got visible gold came out of that one. That's what's nice about that sluice box with that rib mat and any sluice box in the head, you can see gold every time you bring it out so you know where you're getting the gold from in your hole. We're on bedrock now, it's about four feet down, I would guess. You know, we're sitting on bedrock outside that or a big boulder, we're still trying to find the very bottom. But I got good reach, the best thing to use is try to keep it as flat as possible. 
pull it back. You tip it up so the 45 degree angle is up. And just dump it right on in. You know, if you tried to go four inch myself, I can't get my hands around it. I can get my hand around a three inch that far with that much opening. I may have to try a four inch to put a handle on it. That'd be pretty awesome. Got to run so much more material to the box, I mean, more water to the box, and I can make it difficult. This is more like a three inch dredge right here. You know, it's a three inch super sucker, or a hand dredge, or whatever you want to call it. Tom, what he's doing with a shovel, you guys all know Tom, you know, we've been dredging for 20 some odd years together. He picks up a load, takes the big rocks off and tosses it in the sluice box. It goes from there. We don't classify, we produce. You know, you want to take the time to classify and run a nice slow box, yeah, you're going to get some finer gold, maybe. But this is a fine gold sluice, we're not going to lose enough to worry about. And we see some nice pieces in there, and that's what we're going for. Feel a plug. Clear, right? <coughs> like with that rock, when I pulled it up, I got it out about this far. It sucked that rock up in there, and that was all she wrote. So I brought it up here and dumped it in, tapped it a couple times, and it fell out. We've had to physically remove it, but it's working good because he pulls up the big rocks with the shovel, and then I do this, you know, sucking everything else out of there with a super sucker. And I'm just working right on the edge of the bedrock. We got a lot of gold in that one. There's probably I'll bet we got twenty I bet we got twenty flakes out of there. That's a nice one. Real small flake. But that's a that's what we're doing, working bedrock.
We're getting so much gold. We got people down here filming us. Like state of California, they love to watch us out making a living the old fashioned way. <laughs> so that's bedrock. We're uh, on bedrock, working our way kind of in and out, just working around it. You know, we got the very bottom, which is right there. You can see the little piece of bedrock on the left and the little V that it's forming. And we've sucked all that out already with a sucker. So we're kind of pretty much at the end of this hole till we... And that's gold! Thank you, State of California. Plug up. Looks like it's about three eighths of an inch long. Of course, that's under the water. It's probably like a quarter inch long, but still nice. And probably when I pan it out, it'll be like a sixteenth of an inch long, but it looks pretty when it's magnified. yesterday so uh, we went down here <laughs> we were at home making this watch a movie Good quarter inch one. Is that on that bedrock? Yeah, it was right there. Oh. Nice nugget. You know what? Let's get the sucker ball and get that sucker out of there. That was too nice to leave in there. Yeah, that's a nice piece. See that piece? Right there, that's a nice piece right there. It's about, oh, it's probably a quarter inch long, the longest point, eighth of an inch wide. But look at all the other gold we got down there now, you know? And that's not count what we got down below. 
we're gonna turn this camera off for a while and so you guys can watch the cleanup when we do that. Yeah, that's a pretty good day. So this is all we do to clean the sluice box, go ahead and take her up. We just lift the front out. That's good. Don't go too far. That's good right there. Yeah. And then uh there is other gold in there that you can see. Right now on the very right hand side in that black box, in that little black spot. Nice little chunk. See how the black sand is real good? We're being clicked it up real nice right up here. Oh, this is expanded metal over miner's moss. The miner's moss is the back miner's moss, so nothing can go underneath it. And uh, well, we're just going to go ahead and back it up here. We're going to dump it, show you how easy it is to clean this thing. As I was demoing it for the guy here in America, he uh, pretty much gave it to me. So, at least trying to sell them here in America and everywhere else. I don't know if he even makes them anymore. It's probably seven, eight years ago. I've done a couple of the videos with this one. But all you gotta do to clean it is you pop these tabs, move them to the outside. This thing just pops up. Pulls out. I don't know if we want to get water in there or not. So this is what came with it, stock miner's moss, but it's the back miner's moss, which uh, is a little harder to clean up because the stuff doesn't just fall through it. it makes it nice because it's designed for the fine gold they have over there in Europe, and uh, so it'll catch all the gold here in California. Makes it real nice. That's good. That's all we got for ponds, not a whole lot. Just put it down in the water. All the way under. Okay. Do you want to grab the, the blue one with the magnet and stuff? Not a whole lot of water right here, but... Okay, out of gold pan. Yeah, <laughs> look at my other video. A lot of gold. Look at all that gold up there at the very top already. Yeah. It's just flying all over the place. Oh, I forgot my safety pin again. God forbid. It's because I don't use a safety pin. I'm going to lose anything. It's like, whatever. We're going to lose enough to worry about. I'll tell you that right now. Right, that's pretty good. That's good. That's good. Now I'm stopping here is because we got so much black sand in here. Yep, I got a blue baby. And, uh,
want to get the black sand out because it's heavier than the gold. If you don't get the black sand out, you can't pan it down where you can get the gold. And I got visible gold in the pan just sitting here. So I got to get this stuff out of there. So we got all kinds of black sand came out of here. I'm going to pan this too because there's going to be all kind of gold down in this too. But that'll come in a minute. So once you get all that magnetite out of there, magnetite, then it allows everything else to flow real nice and smooth. And we're not going to lose nothing here. Just going to watch it. There's, yeah, the gold's still floating on the top. We got a lot of real fine stuff in here. rocks loose and take it back and forth. All it's doing is just breaking loose the rocks. The gold will go back and forth, but it's not going to flow out of there. Little bullet rock doesn't want to cooperate. So we got visible gold up here on the top. And I don't want to just keep losing it off the edge. See that one's getting close to the edge. There is a, the gold is so light that we're going to have to go ahead and classify it, get everything out of the magna, you know, magnifier. We're going to have to classify it down to oh, 50 mesh probably to save the gold because this is uh, this is fine gold land. We're in hydraulic tailings. This is all the gold that the hydraulic monitors missed. And this right here, this is just a magnetite. There's a piece showed up on the uh, left up over here. So I can watch it and see what's going on. But I'm just watching it all go to the very edge. I'm not getting anywhere, so I'm gonna have to classify it and screen it down and get it down to 50 mesh. And now we can use a blue bowl or gold screw or probably both or whatever. Those aren't nuggets rolling out, they're just rocks. Look at all that gold up there on the top in the left-hand corner. There's all kinds of gold in here, man. This is just ridiculous. So, yeah, let's do the old safety pan trip. And we'll just do what we can do here to Pan it down to get it where you can see it. I guess that rock's a little big. <laughs> that black sand's so heavy it's not even moving. That's what makes it so nice, man. That's why the hydraulic motor has lost so much of it. And the black sand is just so thick down here. Okay, well there you can see what we got. Um, some of it anyway. I mean, it's all in the black sand, but how f look how fine the gold is. Got that nice little chunk out of there. We got a whole bunch of fines. We got some other pieces, a little smaller than this, but they're all mixed up in the black sand down here because we have to strain it all out. So,
there's all kinds of stuff in here. We can try playing with it and showing you how easy it is to pan, but you know what? It comes right down to it. There's gold in that pan. We're going to take it home and clean it the easy way. And that way you got to, had a chance to see it. And uh, that was, uh, yeah, you know, a few hours, three and a half hours, I think, something like that. So, so this is it for the day, guys. We got gold in the pan, as you can see. Uh, we didn't get skunked, like usual. <laughs> yeah, we don't get skunked, so. Okay, this is how we made it. Um, basically, it's about 66 inches tall. Like I said, I'm six foot, so I can see over it. I wish I would have made it seven foot tall, this part here. We made this 55 inches, um, the, this length right here. This is just a cap, and it just pops off, and this is it. This was just a guide, just a 3 to 2 reducer, and all it does is sit on there, and this coupling, the uh, elbow goes right inside of it and locks into place, so it makes for a perfect stop. Okay, all this is this fishing line wrapped around here, just like you see on the 49er Mike webpage under John Adams suction tube or suction dredge design. The only difference is we put the black plastic underneath to act as a, a bigger piece and I hose clamp both ends so it keeps everything you know uniform and works really good and it just slides in and out just perfect so the other thing um, was this handle uh, this is just inch and a quarter PVC I mean inch and a half PVC the main frame here the elbow and I reduce it down to one inch in here and this is a, a threaded reducer okay a threaded yeah just a threaded reducer and then I just put a one inch cap on the end and what I did I took a, a piece of the inch and a half and just cut it off so it spins on here so when you're pulling it your hand can go any way you don't got to worry about it wrenching your hand at all so this was something I hadn't seen before um, everybody has their own ideas the 90 degree I found on a, actually I saw a guy who builds them on eBay and uh, Desert Dog, and I think he lists his under um, hand suction dredge or suction hand dredge or something like that. And you can buy them there from him already made up. And you can call him up and he'll make them as long as you want. Okay. So personally, my own from my own experience that you guys just saw, I needed at least two more feet. Um, this is 55 inches, you know, just the one piece. You know, and what we're looking at right now is what, five feet, maybe? I guess I can measure it real quick. I just happen to have a tape measure. Kind of funny how they're both the same length about. Uh, 62 inches from the floor. So, yeah, basically five feet, you know, with the 45 and the thing on the end. Um, so, yeah, I could have used two more feet, maybe maybe even longer. So what I, what you can do is cut this in half and put a, uh, put a screw in coupling in this part. So I do is screw it together and you can add a two foot piece or you can put this same piece back on there if you want to use the five footer. Then you got a seven footer or an eight footer when you need it. And you can use the same plunger. It doesn't have to extend all the way down through the tube. You don't have to make it any longer than what it is already. Uh, you can if you want to, but I, you know, you can only pull it so far. And this is about my arm's reach right here. That's why I made it this long, just so it'd be perfect. And plus, this was uh, this was stuff I had laying around the house. I didn't just go out and buy it. I went out and bought the fittings. I had the pipe sitting here. Um, but that's a good demonstration. You know. Okay, so now you know how to build a hand-powered suction device and you got everything you need. If you need more plans go ahead and go to 49ermike.com, hit the forum tab, scroll down the forum tab till you see the DYI or do-it-yourself section. Then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of that section, real close to the bottom, it says do-it-yourself plans for everything and it's got, you click on that link and it's got all kinds of links and like I said this was John Adams um, suction dredge basic design. I just put my own stuff on it with his help. Then my buddy David Bryce or Zuka, you know, he made one that was three inches, so I used 
that also. He also said he went 52 inches or something like that, which made me want to go a little longer. Um, I'm saying I went 55 inches on my length, and I would have should have gone like 85 inches on my length. Okay, another 30 inches would be good. So, and you could see why. We were way down that hole. If I want to stay out of the water, I've got plenty of strength sitting down in a chair, and for another three feet, just to go ahead and use my knees and legs to go ahead and you know bully it over to the uh, sluice box. Okay, would work really good with a another two feet to 30 inches on there. Uh, once again, if you like this video and my other videos, hit the like button. Go back to some other videos. Go into my playlist section. You'll see I got all kinds of videos in my playlist. A lot of them, the ones that have me in them, the ones that I've done on all kinds of things, bipolar disorder and post-traumatic stress syndrome, which has gotten a lot of uh, emails to me, really good ones. I've been helping a lot of people on that. And then my advanced child protection, which I, I changed the name on it to see if it would lift it up, but uh, yeah, I could definitely use some votes too. You know, people need to see that stuff. Not everybody. But being there's 50,000 different videos and mine's way down there in the list because nobody sees them. You know, my teaching videos on extreme subjects is kind of being lost. So if you don't mind, click into my playlist section and uh, you don't have to watch them because they're really serious and they're not meant for everybody. But hit the like button on those too if you get time. Thanks a lot.